Hi everyone! So you all know how much I love a good mystery art supply box. So let's take a look at the smart art box or is it smart art? I'm not sure. I haven't opened one of these before so I am very curious. So smart art and it is starting to sound a little funny now when I said it so many times but smart art were kind enough to send this to me to try out. I am not sponsored or anything. If you would like to try this out yourself I will have a link in the description box below so feel free to check that out. So yeah, let's open this big boy. It is such a big box and power creativity. Oh, oh, look at that. It is so pretty. I really like these boxes with the orange inside. And now my microphone is in the way, so I'm just gonna turn it this way instead. Wow, there is really a lot of stuff in here. I have a huge desk, but it is still too small. I think this might be the April box. This guy has been on the road for two months because of the current situation in the world right now. Postal services is just super slow, which I can understand. Ooh, wow, these are heavy. So it looks like we got some ink bottles. Abstract acrylic ink from Senlier, I think it's pronounced. It is quite a big bottle and we have three of those. We have the titanium white. Oh, my favorite, thalo green. And azure or azure, azure blue. This one looks like it might need a little shake. It is a very light blue and it got a built-in pipette in the lid, which I do appreciate. It makes it a lot easier to transfer the ink from the bottle. We have a Sour Punch candy. I think I'm gonna have to pass this to my boyfriend because I can't handle sour things. I don't know, it just makes my whole face hurt. A little oval sticker that says Smart Art. Then we have brochure, brochure. I'm not really sure how to say that in English, but a little booklet with some project pointers, what you can do with the supplies in the box. Some instructions how to do calligraphy or hand lettering. Yeah, that is interesting. I have such a bad handwriting, so I could really need to learn how to do some fancy hand lettering. The next thing, oh, look at this. Oh, it is purple, my favorite color. It is a bullet journal. I don't know if you can see it, but it got these dotted pages. It's made by Fabriano, which is a really good brand. I often use their watercolor paper. It is amazing. And then the next thing in the box is, ah, oh, we got a little case of paintbrushes and they're made by Royal and Lanical. Actually a really nice little packaging with this Ziploc opening mechanism. So we got three round paintbrushes in the sizes one, three and five. Oh this is a big pack. We have the Spectrum R metallic twin tip markers. This set is apparently called Rare Minerals. So we have a little instructional booklet. Oh, this looks so shiny and pretty. So we have at one end a little bullet tip. And at the other end we have a brush tip. Oh, that's nice. And we have them in the colors Jade Green, Amethyst, Green Citrine or Citrine, Blue Topaz, Red Garnet, and pink quartz. That is lovely. I actually collect some minerals and gemstones myself, so I can see one more item in here. It's time to rethink everything. Stonehenge Aqua Black is the first 100% cotton black paper. It's time to rethink everything. Instead of building up shadows, you build up light. That is something I've been trying before, and it is actually very challenging. I think that is everything in the box. So yeah, we actually got a couple of sheets in here, three to be exact. Here we can actually read about the project and the tools or the art supplies. So it looks like there is a lot of focus on hand lettering. We got the bullet journal and the ink and the brush pen. I'm not really sure how to make art by doing hand lettering, but maybe I can incorporate it somehow. But anyway, first let's start by swatching the art supplies and maybe I will get some idea what I can make with them. Start with trying out the supplies in the bullet journal, I think. Ah, that is nice. The cover isn't fully attached to the back of the notebook, so it will actually lay flat when opening it. That is very nice. 
So let's start with these Spectrum Nard pens. And then we have the bullet tip. Oh, that is a nice green. The brush nib is very soft and juicy. I wonder how these are to blend. I can't really mix them too much because I feel like they are starting to eat the paper. So then we have these guys. I'm just gonna use this as my palette. Oh, that is a very nice green. And it feels like a very nice paintbrush. It feels like it is easy to control. Then we have the white. It isn't very opaque ink because you can still see the dots through. It's not the best paper to use these inks on. It is definitely bending and warping. So let's see how they are on the watercolor paper. I think I'm just gonna cut a little piece off and use that for the swatching. Here we have a very generous piece to swatch on. Colors really pop on this black paper. Green is so pretty. Yeah, they do definitely look a lot nicer and brighter on the black paper than on the white. They don't really look that metallic when they dry though. The phthalo green isn't really showing up that well though. Oh, this is a really nice paintbrush. Look at that. Ooh. I could just feel this whole paper doing these kinds of dots because it is so satisfying, but I'm not really sure how fun that would be to watch, to be honest. So yeah, I'm just gonna do some brainstorming and maybe I can come up with something to do. So yeah, let's get started. So I had to test if I could actually paint with a metallic ink, so I scribbled on a piece of plastic and then I applied it with the paintbrush and it worked pretty well, the color got a little more desaturated though. And then I had this idea that I would practice doing some hand lettering in the little booklet, but to be honest the pen was a little too thick and I could just feel the boredom sneaking up on me, so I decided to just skip the whole thing. Hand leathering is not my cup of tea, so to speak. I want to draw. I like to do a little test piece to get a feeling for the art supplies and to try out different techniques. I mixed the white and the green ink and I got this kind of minty toothpaste green and then I started to color this cat cactus, a cactus if you will, and I think it was a little hard mixing the ink, they kept separating so the color turned out a little streaky. I maybe could have mixed it a little more thoroughly though, but honestly it didn't bother me too much, it is just a practice piece. And I think my favorite thing with this whole drawing is the pot, it turned out so cute. I really love the fishbone pattern, I think it's called. And I ended up drawing over the painted area with one of the green markers to even out the tone a bit. And I was a little worried that painting over the metallic pens with a white ink would activate the pen and blend in with a white. But I did a little test and it turned out that the metallic pens are basically waterproof or permanent once they dried. So I didn't have to worry about that thankfully. But yeah, after adding some needles to the cactus, it is done and I'm ready to move on to the next piece. So on this black Stonehenge watercolor paper it says it is time to rethink everything and instead of building up shadows, building up light, which to me at least it is actually pretty challenging. I think you are just so used to working from light to dark and not the other way around. So usually when working with negative space, meaning just leaving the paper as it is, which is mainly white because you often work with white paper, especially when working with watercolors that is more translucent, but in this case it is black, so I thought I would take advantage of the color of the paper and try to incorporate negative space into my art, so therefore I'm drawing this tiger. I thought it could be perfect since tigers have black stripes, so I can just leave them as the color of the paper. And yeah, it was a little confusing at some points, navigating around the stripes and the shaded areas. 
And I'm starting with a white ink and I made kind of like an ink wash, adding a tiny bit of water to make it a little more translucent. So that would be the first base layer that would act like shading underneath when I'm adding a second layer on top to create the highlights. I did do a lot of layering for this piece, the paint looks very bright when adding it to the paper, but then it fades a bit so I had to really build up the contrast and the highlights, and I had so much fun working on the fur, which is basically the whole painting though, but the paintbrushes were pretty great to be honest, they held their shapes really well, and it was very satisfying seeing the white on the black for some reason, I almost didn't want to add in any other colors because I thought it looked so pretty. I mentioned before that working from dark to light, it can be a little challenging and a little confusing since you are not used to think in that way, I'm not used to it at least. And I have to say, working around the stripes, leaving them black and only color the colored fur so to speak, I don't know why, but it almost gave me a headache. I think it might be because I knew I couldn't undo it if I accidentally painted on a stripe. But but it got very confusing, especially when working with the white. I think the contrast between the black and the white made it almost psychedelic to look at. And it is such a minor thing, but when you have to think backwards, the brain has to do a lot of extra work and it is very tiring. If I was working on a white paper with black ink, I would have colored in the stripes instead of the fur. And instead of building up shadows, I had to build up highlights, so I couldn't really work or think the way I normally do. I really had to pay attention to what I was doing, so yeah, it was probably very good practice for my brain. Rain. So I wanted to use the pink quartz metallic pen for the rest of the fur, it is such a nice and vibrant color, but I thought maybe it would look a little too much just going in directly with the pen. I was worried that it would look a little flat, especially since the white fur is much more shaded. So I thought maybe I could use the green ink instead, mixing it with the white, but I didn't really want it to use green. Then I remembered I could just dilute the pen ink with white water and paint it on to create a darker base first and then build up the highlights on top of that. And this color, it didn't look very metallic at all, even when I added water to it, which made me so, so happy. It means that I can probably scan this drawing without it looking too weird, because metallic colors don't look very fancy when scanning them. And then I realized I could probably add a little bit of white ink to the paint to make it more opaque and lighter, which worked perfectly. I still had to do a lot of layering though, it is like this paper, it really sucks up the paint, but it is such a great paper. It is the first time I use black watercolor paper, so that was a very nice experience. I think it would be perfect for gouache for example, that is more opaque, so the colors would really pop. It was very interesting to see how the pink tone shifted when it got mixed with the white ink. When adding more white, the pink turned from this cooler purpley pink to a more warm baby pink. Maybe the metallic pigments makes the pink look a certain way, and when adding more white, the metallic pigments get diluted and the pink pigments shows through even more. I have no idea, but it was such a great color to use for the nose, a pink cute little nose. Oh, and I almost forgot to talk about the smart art box or my thoughts about it. It is a little more pricey compared to other art supply boxes that I've opened, but I really enjoyed the art supplies in the box. It felt like high quality materials and good brands. The bullet journal may not be an art supply really, but it is still a full size book. We get a whole pack of very nice pens, three full size bottles of ink, paintbrushes, 
And I think it is fun that the boxes are themed like this one that was made for hand lettering, even if I didn't do any hand lettering. They've had a manga box, ink pad box, gouache, so yeah, you kind of get like a project to work with, and then you also get prompts for each week of the month, but as you can see, you don't really have to follow the projects or the prompts, you can just do whatever you want with art supplies. But yeah, in my opinion, it was a very fun box, I very much enjoyed it. Then to add a little more tone to the piece, I went in with a pink pen directly. It felt like it needed some more saturated colors to make it pop. I had so much fun working on this piece, it was not what I first thought that I would create using these art supplies, and I feel like sometimes I get a little more creative when I have supplies that I normally don't work with. I will definitely try to get my hands on some more black watercolor paper, it feels like you can create some really cool art with it. I really love how this tiger turned out, I like the abstract look with the stripes fading out in the background in the bottom of the painting. Let me know what you think, and if you like my art, there will be art prints available, among other things, in my shop, link is in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I hope I will see you next time. Keep drawing my happy cats, bye!